Just ahead on KDLT News, the South Dakota Highway Patrol wants you to have a safe travel weekend. And if you don't, they could fine you. And a Brookings Aviation School has something you won't find in any other flight school in America. We'll show you next on KDLT News. From KDLT Television, this is KDLT News at 10. Thanks for joining KDLT News tonight. Three South Dakota National Guard soldiers who were struck by a vehicle are in critical but stable condition. They are Specialist Brian Moe of Clear Lake, Sergeant Christian Vizecki of Astoria, and Sergeant Donald Peters of Flandreau of the 727th Transportation Company of Elk Point, Brookings, Watertown, and Flandreau. Vizecki and Peters are in Germany. Moe is in Kuwait at this time. All three are receiving medical treatment. For those of you traveling this, in, through South Dakota this weekend, you bet, better make sure you buckle up. According to a Buckle Up America report, car crashes killed more than 42,000 people in the year 2001 from not wearing a seatbelt. KDLT's Melissa McCready tells us how the South Dakota Highway Patrol will penalize people not wearing their seatbelts. While more than 35 million drivers hit the highways this holiday weekend, some law enforcement officers are busy at work ensuring their safety. People need to have seatbelts on, period. One way to ensure driver safety is by writing tickets for people not buckling up. Part of our job is education, and uh, um, that's what we're here for. And one way that we educate people is by giving them a ticket. Costing that person 20 bucks. Depending on the situation, that price can add up quickly. The law states that the driver is responsible for any passengers under the age 18, which means if they aren't buckled up, the driver gets charged. Anyone 18 or older is responsible for themselves. It's getting to be more and more zero tolerance. That goes for drivers, passengers, and even children in car seats. A Buckle Up America study reports that 90% of car seats are installed incorrectly. Just don't think that you can put a, a, an infant seat into a vehicle and just have everything work out hunky-dory. There's a lot of times some assembly required for the seat the infant seat to work properly, do it according to manufacturer standards and their direction. Sergeant John Norberg recommends drivers to always expect the unexpected. Accidents are not planned events. If I'm going to be in an accident, I want to, I want to have the odds in my favor. So I'm wearing my seat belts. They have to buckle up. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. Melissa McCready, KDLT News, Sioux Falls. For more information regarding seatbelts and car seats, we've set up a link for you at KDLT.com. AAA expects lots of drivers on the road this Memorial Day weekend. They estimate 35 million Americans will travel more than 50 miles from their home this holiday. This weekend comes at a time when road construction is in full swing. In order to prevent any traffic delays, the South Dakota Department of Transportation suggests dialing 511 from your cell or landline phone. It gives up-to-date road restrictions, conditions, and weather for any specific state highway. Or they also have a website where you can find all that information with just a couple mouse clicks. To get to that website, you can log on to KDLT.com. An overpass collapse in Nebraska has left one person dead this weekend. A semi-truck hit an overpass support on Interstate 80 sometime after 10 last night, causing the bridge to fall. That driver died on the way to the hospital. Three other drivers were injured in the accident and two had to be treated at area hospitals. State employees are working around the clock to have the interstate reopened for the busy traffic day. The damaged bridge will be removed until rebuilding plans are made. If you are traveling over the holiday weekend, you may have already noticed the falling gas prices. According to AAA, the price of fuel in South Dakota has dropped about four cents a gallon since last month when it was $1.54. The average price of self-serve regular this May was a buck fifty. Fuel prices in Rapid City over that period have fallen 10.6 cents per gallon. The national average is $1.49, which is the lowest price since January. Flight schools and flight training came under intense scrutiny following 9-11. Big Sioux Aviation in Brookings did lose a few students after the attacks, but their business quickly rebounded. Big Sioux is the busiest flight school in the Sioux Empire, and they're looking to get even bigger. KDLT's Jason Melillo tells us why. Big Sioux Aviation can offer something no other flight school in America has. This is the uh, very first uh, level three of Cessna 172S, like just behind me here. It, uh, it's the first in the United States. The Cessna flight simulator helps teach students how to operate that aircraft. 
it's the most realistic training you can get without actually being up in the air. The visual picture and all the indications across the gauges are exactly the same, just like you'd see in the real aircraft. The simulator is controlled by a computer that allows instructors to follow a pilot's progress. And I can monitor what he's doing on my screen here. I can tell what his altitude is. I can see where he's tracking and turning. Instructors can also simulate instrument failures, engine problems, and unexpected spins. There's the spin. And then to recover, do your recovery procedures. The airplane's ready to fly again. So we're back to straight and level after the uh, recovery. In the post 9 11 world, the airline industry has taken some hard knocks. Flight schools came under intense scrutiny, mostly for having lax screening methods. But Big Sue's never had a problem with that. About 90% 90, 90 of our business comes from uh, is the South Dakota State. And if they get through the, uh, the university system, they, they come here. They are, there is um, identification checks and so forth that we do. The cockpit and the Cessna aircrafts are almost exactly the same as the flight simulator. So by training on that device, students have a pretty good idea of what they'll encounter once they actually get up in the air. Jason Melillo, KDLT News, Brookings. Jim Jones Sr. was a pilot for Northwest for 35 years and just recently retired in 2001. South Dakota is one of 12 states getting money from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA. Today, FEMA announced the states to receive grants through the agency's pre-disaster mitigation program to help state, local, and tribal governments protect lives and property by developing multi-hazard mitigation plans. The plans will soon be a prerequisite for receiving certain types of mitigation funding and disaster assistance. South Dakota will receive nearly $250,000 to support development of that hazard mitigation plan. The funds make up 75% of the anticipated cost of these plans. The remaining 25% represents a cost share to be provided from a non-federal source. Two Iowa teens who lied about being shot during a robbery have been charged in court yesterday. Derek Krayabrink and Nicholas Lokors will do community service and pay restitution to the victims of the incident that occurred in January. The boys were 16 when they stole money from Katz Oil Company and shot each other in the, in the shoulder as a way to cover up the crime. In February, they both pleaded guilty to second-degree theft, conspiracy, carrying weapons, and filing a false report. Canada is responding to its case of mad cow disease and putting farms on alert. And if you take Lipitor, get a pen ready. We have some recall information you may want to jot down. And after a few isolated showers and thunderstorms earlier this evening across the Sioux Empire, skies are starting to clear. Temperature is pretty comfy if you're thinking about heading out and about this evening. Mid-50s and lower 60s. I'll tell you how warm we can expect to get this holiday weekend coming up. Vinny, what's going on in the world of sports? Just in the Sioux Falls, Canaries play their second game of the season today in Schaumburg, Illinois against the Flyers. Find out if they got a win in the second game of their three-game series. And the Sioux Falls Storm hosted the Billings Outlaws tonight. Find out if they got a win as they march towards the playoff spot in the National Indoor Football League. All that more coming up a little bit later. And Vinny, the streets of St. Paul are coming alive with a familiar face. This Peanuts character is blanketing the streets this summer. I'll tell you all about it in just a few minutes. And tonight's very friendly weather sketch comes to us from Brittany. She's a first grader from Wakanda School. Brittany's thinking about heading out to the playground and enjoying the swing set this Memorial Day weekend. And she's made herself eligible for our six-foot party sub drawing. That's going to be this Wednesday, the 28th. You'll want to tune in then. Sorry, teenagers, you must be 12 years old or younger. Just include your name, age, city, or school with your drawing. We'll see you after the break. The Schultz family unveiled statues in St. Paul destined for sidewalks, plazas, and parks of the city for the duration of the summer. The exhibition is the fourth in the series of tributes to Peanuts creator Charles M. Schultz. Other characters have been featured in previous summers. An estimated one million people from 60 countries around the globe came to see the Lucy statues. At summer's end, the statues will be auctioned off. Proceeds benefit the Charles M. Schultz Scholarship Fund. And now, your KTLT First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist Justin Bruce. 
I think everybody knows the secret that it's going to be really nice on Monday because when I went to make uh, golf reservations, they're full. I think, yeah, everyone's been privy to the info. Looks like this holiday weekend is going to be pretty nice. So that's the good news. And we did see a few showers and thunderstorms, isolated though they were, that moved across the Sioux Empire earlier this evening. Those, as we'll see in a few minutes, have all but died down. Temperature is pretty comfortable if you're thinking about heading out about 56 here in Sioux Falls with a 54 in Brookings. Still a little bit warmer as you head off to the western Sioux Empire with a 61 in Pierre and a pair of 63s in Winter and Valentine. And now dew points, which are a measure of the moisture in the atmosphere, if we click this up, are still a little on the high side. And with that being said, we can see that these dew points are in the upper 40s, even lower 50s. And as long as the dew points are close to the temperature, it means that we could run the chance of seeing a little bit of fog early tomorrow morning. So you'll want to be aware of that. But other than that early morning fog, I think tomorrow is going to be a pretty sunny day, just a mixture of sun and clouds, no chances of rain or thunderstorms to speak of. So if you've got a picnic planned or a barbecue looks like tomorrow or the next day, it's going to be a really nice time to have that as we roll throughout this Memorial Day weekend. On the regional satellite, we can still see just a few clouds around the Worthington area. Also another patch of clouds just to the northwest of Yankton. But as we've mentioned, these are going to be dissipating as we head throughout the overnight hours leaving us with those mostly sunny skies that I promise for tomorrow and for Monday. Now here is the Sioux Falls Regional Radar. Ignore this green garbage that pops up. My attention is drawn to these very light showers just to the northeast of Brookings. We also might be able to squeeze out just a few drops from the atmosphere there near Wagner, but as I mentioned, these are going to be dying out as the atmosphere dries out as we head through the overnight hours. Here's the national temperature map. We can see this large ridge of high pressure building in the west with temperatures still close to that triple digit mark at the current hour in Phoenix. Very warm there. We're not going to be that warm as we head towards Memorial Day, but this ridge is going to start to very slowly push towards the South Dakota Sioux Falls area, and that's going to mean some warmer temperatures as we head throughout the next three or four days. We'll see that in the five-day forecast, though, in a second. Here is that ridge of high pressure that I mentioned with this stubborn, persistent area of low pressure that continues to swirl over the Great Lakes. A cloudy, rainy day for many folks in the Northeast. But for us here in the Sioux Empire, things are looking rather nice. Skies are starting to dry out, and that'll be good news for our holiday forecast. Our weather flight this evening takes us through some of that more exciting weather, but here in the Sioux Empire, things are rather calm. So we'll look ahead to our seven cities forecast. We can see that tonight. I've already taken out the chance of those showers and thunderstorms. Things are drying out, just partly cloudy skies for the rest of the evening. Temperatures dropping into the upper 40s to around 50 degrees in Mitchell and Yankton with light winds from the east. By tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds in store. Temperatures close to what they were today in the upper 60s and lower 70s. But by the time Memorial Day rolls around, about 5 to 10 degrees warmer in some spots. Temps in the middle 70s to upper 70s. And I wouldn't be surprised if we broke 80 in places in the western Sioux Empire like Pier. With southeast winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And here's that all-important five-day forecast, and we can see that it looks very nice. Pleasant weather expected through Tuesday. Wednesday doesn't look to be a washout either, but we do have the chance of a few showers or thunderstorms, and we can see that things will be warming up as we head through the middle of next week with lower 80s forecasted as highs on Wednesday, middle 80s gen on Thursday. So all in all, not a very bad five-day forecast at all. And for those people that are going out to picnic on Monday, it should be a pretty nice warm day for them. If you don't have a good picnic, you won't be able to blame the weather for it. The <laughs> okay. weather looks fantastic. Sounds great. Thanks, Justin. Sure. If you're taking the cholesterol-lowering drug Lipitor, you should check the bottle. The FDA is recalling about 100,000 bottles of counterfeit Lipitor pills that were discovered after several health complaints. Now, the fake version has the words repackaged by MedPro Incorporated on the lower left corner of certain bottles. Lipitor users are advised to immediately check their bottles to see whether they have the fake version marked with these numbers and return them to the pharmacy where they were purchased. A criminal investigation is underway, although no one has been charged. Counterfeit bottles are marked with the numbers that you see right here on your screen. Still ahead on KDLT News at 10, New York's former mayor is making big news with his wedding plans tonight. We'll show you why Mayor Bloomberg has a big role in tonight's ceremony. Former New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani wed longtime girlfriend Judith Nathan tonight. The two were married at his old residence, Gracie Mansion, which got a taxpayer-funded top-to-bottom scrubbing for the wedding. 
Giuliani was all smiles as he arrived at the ceremony site. The star-studded invitation list of 400 included Governor George Pataki, Saturday Night Live guru Lauren Michaels, and statesman Henry Kissinger. Current mayor Michael Bloomberg officiated the ceremony. Giuliani's son Andrew served as the best man and said he supports his father in all he does. The marriage will be the third for Giuliani, the second for Nathan. Canadian agricultural officials have placed three more Alberta cattle farms under quarantine as part of their investigation into the country's first case of mad cow disease. Investigators are working to trace the origins of the cow that was diagnosed with the disease earlier this week. A total of 16 farms are now under strict quarantine. The test results will tell investigators if other cattle in the disease cows herd were also infected will not be available until Monday. I reiterate again, this is one cow in, uh, in Alberta. There are 5.2 uh, 5 million head of cattle. We do uh, intensive testing, far exceeding international guidelines, exceeding national guidelines. Several countries, including the U.S., Mexico, and Japan, have banned the import of Canadian beef while the investigation is taking place. We're going to talk about storm and not the weather. That's right, Jen. Are you ready for some football? Because the storm are in their last five games of the season, marching on towards a playoff berth. We'll tell you if they got a win tonight against Billings. And now, KDLT Sports with Vince Conway. Welcome back. The Sioux Falls Storm had a home game tonight against the Billings Outlaws. The Storm needed a win to remain in the playoff hunt. And on to the Sioux Falls Arena we go. And boy, are they shooting fireworks up there? Here we are picking up the action. In the first is the first play from scrimmage. Casey Veenhoff drops back. And guess who he finds? Corey Walker all alone in the end zone for the touchdown. They miss the PAT. It's 6-0 Storm. But here come the Outlaws. Albert Higgs, he scrambles and he finds Ron Harper. A little toss into the end zone. Bobbles it and gets it in there. Touchdown Billings. They they take a 7-6 to six lead. However, Veenhoff and the Storm would come right back. He tosses to Cody Jamison, who gets it all the way to the one-yard line. One yard line, paves the way for Donnie Hilsenroth. Thought he was a linebacker. He's going in for doing his impersonation of William Refrigerator Perry there. That's 23-7 to seven Storm, and the kids sure like what they see here. And this... Is Justin Bivens. He had a great game last week. He had an even better one this week. He gets a touchdown there. 23-6 Storm lead. They go on to beat the Outlaws 36-32. The Storm now are 6-4 on the year, and they are getting closer to a playoff spot. Today was the final day in the state championships and state championships in boys tennis at McKinnon Park. And we pick up the action in the double section. This is Eric Sorensen and Pete Sorensen from Lincoln. This is in the second set. Eric Sorensen's return is too much for Dustin Lacey of Rapid City Central. However, Lacey says, I can do that too. He gets a serve that Pete Sorensen can't handle. That ties the sets up at one apiece. This is Eric Sorensen. He serves this one, and Pete finishes finishes it off. A little Sorensen connection there. Nice play there for the uh, Lincoln Lincoln group. But Max Grasby, he will serve to the Sorensons. But Lacey can handle the return. Pete and Eric Sorensen will go on to win the championship in that flight of the doubles. And here are the, your doubles winners for the 2003. Sorensons were number one. Peterson and Hoffman for, in flight two. Free. Uh, Free, freehand and Jackson can barely read that for number three. On to the singles, Williams, Sorensen, Anderson, Townsend, and Hoffman are on your five. And in fight six, Brett Ammon of Lincoln is your winner there. And the team standings, it was O'Gorman. They win this one 604. Rapid City Stevens and Lincoln round your top three. Coach Don Barnes of O'Gorman, needless to say, was very happy, but he's also looking forward to next year. Well, our expectations that we could we can run for a while. Uh, we got some, yeah, we got some good young kids, and we lose three seniors out of our top uh, 12, so to speak. And uh, yeah, we should be okay next year. Sioux Falls Canaries are looking for their second win of the season after an impressive outing last night. They sent Corey Dagley to the hill against the Schaumburg Flyers, and unfortunately, their wheels would come off in the eighth inning. They, the Flyers would score two unearned runs. They knock off the Canaries 5-3. to three. The losing pitcher was Brian Felkel. Folks, the Canaries now are 1-1 one one on the young season. And moving on to the Minnesota Twins. They're over on the West Coast. That game just got underway. Twins lead the Mariners in the top of the fourth, 4-0. Four we'll have highlights for you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. It's Kyle Loge against Joel Pinheiro. And guess what? The Royals beat the Athletics 3-1. Royals are one game behind the Twins for first place in the AL Central. 
And today a champion was also crowned in high school baseball. It was Roosevelt High versus Washington High at the stadium this afternoon. Picking up the action in the bottom of the second. This is Roosevelt's Corey Benson. He strikes out Washington's Jay Wolf with the bases juiced. Score is not at zero. Top of the third, Alex Strange. He rips a ribby triple to right center field. That will play Chris Portis. That will put the Rough Riders up one to nothing. The very next batter, Landon Sieg now. He chops one up the middle that the second baseman cannot handle into center field. That will play Strange from third base. Walt Roosevelt leads two to nothing. Gay go on to win three to nothing. They are your Class A state champs in high school baseball. Moving on to track at the Division II track championships in Edwardsville, Illinois. Brad Lowry of South Dakota State finished second in the 1500 meter run and Aaron Woolley of South Dakota State finished seventh in the women's 5000 meter run and South Dakota finished seventh in the team spots. Moving on to soccer. This is the Spitfire. Doug Lascotti. Watch him in the corner of your screen. He will get the goal here within the 15th minute. One to nothing. Spitfire lead at this point. Now still in the uh, first half. 34th minute. Chris Johnson. He gets the goal here. Spitfire lead two to nothing. But here comes Winnipeg. This is Brad Parks. Brad Parks. I was going to say Brad Raggy. Brad Parks finds the goal. That puts a, cuts the Spitfire lead to two to one. But the Spitfire would go on and beat Winnipeg four to one. And please stay with us. We'll be right back. Finally tonight, a California college student has eclipsed a milestone and earned a spot in the Guinness yeah. Book of World Records. On, Dan Meyer spent the first 24 hours of Memorial Day weekend working on this. A chain of more than 50,000 paper clips painstakingly link one clip at a time. And to help him roll out the long line of paper clips, the University of California at Davis student <laughs> enlisted a few of his friends. Meyer started putting the chain together yesterday and didn't stop until he knew he had the record. The math major had to beat more than 2,600 feet, the equivalent of just over half a mile. Nothing like putting that college education to good use, I, I suppose. <laughs> Way too much time It's going to take him far. <laughs> He's a pro in office equipment. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow at 5.